Hey guys, uh, this is a quick tutorial on how to connect a Nissan console to USB interface cable to an Android stereo in your car or your cell phone and use that as your uh, additional uh, monitoring tool to monitor engine temp and uh, throttle position, things like that. Um, this console cable comes like this. It comes with this additional USB cable. I believe this is like four or five feet long. Um, one end goes into the cable or the Nissan interface, consult interface. Um, these 14 pin connector goes into your driver's side OBD port. So we'll go ahead and get this. Your OBD port is located on the driver's side left side. So there's my clutch and there's the OBD port. So I will just plug this interface into the OBD port. On the back of the uh, console cable I have the power, transmission and receive. Uh, power is the most I'm concerned with when I plug in the other end of the USB into my either my computer or the Android unit or my cell phone this light should come on telling me that this chip is getting power so in my case uh, I'm using the stereo and it does have a USB input in the back that I ran through my glove box uh, this this is a, like a standard USB input uh, Since I don't have any USB ports on the front. They just gave me additional one in the back um, Most Android Android units come with these extra USB ports that you can leave in the glove box plug in your USB thumb drives for music videos documents or Scenarios like this where you want to um, Use this as a additional interface for gauges so I'm going to actually let me turn the switch on I just have it on accessories so my Android unit kicks in because I don't want to drain my battery let me close the door so there's no noise I'll pause here and let this system boot Okay, once your Android unit is running, um, I'm going to go ahead and plug the USB cable in. Um, before you jump into the Nissan Data Scan app, um, you need to find out what the VID and PID number is for this PLMS device. Uh, because for some reason, this uh, NDS app that I'm using, it does not recognize my adapter by default. No matter what settings you set, it will not find the device. So to, to find out your VID, which is the vendor ID, and PID is your product ID of the USB device, which is your consult cable, you need to use this app called USB Device Info. That's what the icon looks like. I'm going to click on that and hit refresh. Although it, it already recognized the USB device I have plugged in, but it's a good idea to just hit refresh. Um, if you notice, if I unplug it and try refreshing, that should disappear. So I'm going to plug that back in. Cancel on the Torque Pro and hit refresh. So my device, my plugged in device comes up, click on that, and there's three information, three, three points of information that I'm concerned with. The vendor ID, which is 0403. I do not know if this is same for all PLMS adapters or this is different from um, each one shipped out to you guys. So this is something, uh, it would be nice to know if uh, one of you can comment on my video and let me know. Um, 
but this is what I what you need the VID number 0403 so write that down the PLMS vendor name I don't think this matters but we're gonna stick to it and then the product ID is uh, Charlie 7 David 9 um, write that down we're done with this app we're gonna go back to home now you're gonna launch the NDS one app if I try connecting well, first I need to turn my switch on. I did not start the car yet. I just turned the switch on, turned your ventilation system off so you're not draining the battery. So I go up here to the more icon and then I go to preferences and then I look for adapter type. In our case, we're using the USB FTDI. We set it to that. Make sure it did change. Now if I try to connect, I'm going to get this error message. This was really annoying. I could not figure out how to get this device to recognize. So here's a setting. I go up here. And there we go. FTDI, VID, and PID. Click on this plus sign for name, put in PLMS next, or you can hit back to see if it actually inserted in there. And then VID number is 0403, and then PID number is C. 7 D 9 double check your information click save click save again try connecting now um, Android is asking for permission to use the USB device uh, you can check this box to use this by default for some reason I cannot get this settings to stick if, if one of you know how to do that please uh, post in the comment Click OK. It's going to say that. Just click off. Try connecting again. And there you go. It found the USB device. Click on the USB device. It's trying to connect. And it jumps to the dash view because I have my settings set to jump to dash view by default. So if, I, if you go to preferences and default tab. I have my dash view selected. So what it means is I'm saying that as soon as the connection is made with the ECU, jump to the dash view. I don't want to be swiping left and right to go to the dash view. Uh, but if you swipe left, this is where the engine codes come up. You can clear codes, read the codes. And then if I swipe left one more time, I have much more detailed sensor view. And anytime I'm swiping left and right, it's literally, I'm going through these menus. And for some reason, there's a glitch in the app. Uh, all these menus are blacked out. If you look closely, you can read them. It says dash, video recorder, and vice versa. So I'm just going to click on dash. It jumps to dash. Or you can just swipe. Uh, this is pretty neat, video recorder. If you had a camera hooked up to your Android unit, or if you were using your cell phone to do this, uh, the cell phone camera would kick in and you could you could record your driving and have the speedometer and RPM showing. It would be nice if it actually did the whole, it mapped your location and everything. I don't know if it does that or not. But uh, let me start the car so you can see the timing working, the temperature. Since I was already running my car, playing around with this, that's why my temperature is already warmed up. Um... I just added that speed to double check my speedometer to see if it matches. Uh, this app has two speedometer options. One is the vehicle speed and one is the GPS speed. You could use both of them and uh, compare and see if it's accurate. So let me start the car. And there we go. You can see my RPMs. Um, 
these gauges can be modified. You can move them around. Um, those settings are in here under more options, dash settings. You have all kinds of parameters. You can add There's a bunch of switches. Uh, you can add an air conditioning on off switch, which is pretty neat. Right now it shows off if I set my climate control to auto. The air conditioning just kicked on. If I put it on economy, it turned off. Um, Here's a GPS. I can, um, the two of them that I find helpful is the altitude and the GPS speed. You can kind of compare the two and see what your vehicle speed is, what the GPS is saying. Let me move this. Uh, to be able to move gauges, you need to set your dashboard in the edit mode. So you go to more options, preferences. Enable dash edit. Uh, you'll see a blue, or I mean, sorry, red background and blue gauges. Uh, this this tells you that you're in the edit mode and you're able to move your gauges around. I could not figure out how to resize, so if you know how to resize them, uh, please post in the comment. If you want to get rid of a gauge, let's say the air conditioning switch on off, I which I don't really care about can go to dash settings and just remove the ones you don't want. Okay. Um, the process is pretty similar for if you're using a cell phone. Um, you just launch your app um, do the same thing, figure out the PID and VID number for this device, which I already know now. I've taken a screenshot of it. So I, if, if this setting gets wiped for some reason, I'm able to just put it into the phone easily. So I'm just going to unplug my USB from the Android unit. I have my OTG adapter plugged in. I'm going to plug in my USB cable. I'm going to go into more options, more options, FTDI, VID settings, click on add, this is PLMS0403, C7D9, click save, save again. And try okay if you notice the connect button is grayed out I believe I have the auto connect feature turned on which didn't seem to work so if you go to preferences I know some of you have gotten this to work but for me it didn't work so I'm gonna uncheck that so I can manually try to connect and it's gonna ask for permission I'm going to say okay it's gonna say no device found, try again, and there we go. Found the device, click connect, it's trying to connect. It's connected. So right now I'm using my phone for the Nissan data scan app, and it's hooked up to my consult cable. So um, post your questions, comments, uh, let me know what do you guys think. If you guys want to know more about this Android stereo, let me know and I'll be happy to post more information. I believe this was only $230. I think it's totally worth it. There are a couple models. There's one $100 version. Do not buy that. They're crappy. Uh, do your research, uh, watch YouTube reviews and buy a nice one. There are more expensive ones, but the one thing you want to keep in mind is this one has two gigs of RAM um, and about 10 or 12 gigs of uh, hard drive space. So the cheaper ones have one gig of RAM and uh, you're going to run into a lot of app crashing, freezing. Um, 
it's gonna be a slow response. Uh, if you can get your hands on to the four gig RAM model, that's even better, but they're expensive and I don't think it's worth spending that much money on an Android unit when you can get away with the $230 one.